I'm now joined by Rani Orjal, a professor of environmental management at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. He's in Belo Horizonte in Brazil. A very warm welcome to the program, Rani. Um, just listening to our correspondent there um, talking about these figures and the impact of them, how do you read the situation? I think I believe the situation is quite dire because uh, during this time of the year there is usually more rain, and so deforestation tends to start slow over the year. The fact that uh, we are already at a record high and actually numbers that are usually uh, to be expected mid-year when it's drier and it's also easier to access the forest and to actually uh, do some damage is it, indeed worrying. Um, how much has the deforestation, the 20% of deforestation overall that there's been, how much is it changing the reality on the ground, the, the way that the environment is and, and behaves? Well, right now we have about 80% of the forest standing, uh, which might look a lot. But if you look at the, at the picture, at the movie, actually we have been losing the forest at, at a speedy rate. And together with climate change, the impact is substantial. So right now, not only in the areas directly affected by human activities, but even in the areas far away from uh, the agricultural frontier, uh, we're starting to see the forest drying up and also become more prone uh, to fires. And, and this is very concerning because it, it, it indicates that we might be getting closer to a tipping point uh, whereby uh, the damage to the forest might become irreversible. And Roni, that my question was, my next question was going to be how close are we to that tipping point and how do we know when we've reached a point of no return? Well, it's very difficult to, to measure that, also because uh, you might have a drier year uh, together with a El Nino and then lose a lot of carbon and also be more prone to fires. And this kind of drier environment uh, is also one of the aspects of the tipping point. When it goes beyond that, you, we start um, more strongly a process which looks like a savanization process. So rather than having a more humid forest, you have a drier forest and also a forest which is more fragile. And, uh, and this is already happening in the southern parts of the forest, for instance, we have lost about a month of rainfall uh, in the southern parts of the forest, which actually quite a lot of, uh, creating quite a lot of damage in relation to uh, the agricultural production there. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's difficult to, to measure how close we are, but it's definitely uh, too close for comfort. Um, Ronnie, what can be done by the Brazilian authorities? And I suppose more importantly, what will is there for things to be different? Well, at the federal level, uh, there, is the, there is a strong will actually to do less, and that's very concerning. If you look at what happened, especially in the last uh, three to four years, uh, it's possible to see an, an explicit dismantling of law enforcement with very low budgets and also changes in the regulation, which basically makes it impossible for one to be, to be punished. And, so, and also there is a very strong public discourse, uh, in a sense, depicting uh, environmental criminals as they were heroes. And they are hearing that on the ground. And, and and of course, they feel supported by the current administration at the federal level. We see some movement coming from state governments uh, and also from the market, and that's positive, but definitely it has not been able to offset uh, this big push towards uh, deforestation uh, as we have seen today. Raul Ni Raja there joining me um, from Belo Horizonte. Thank you very much. Thank you.